Hello and welcome back. I am so excited to talk to you about business structure today. I don't know if it's the nerd in me as this is one of my favorite subjects to talk about or whether it's just so exciting not to talk about COVID-19 related relief programs today. Either well, either way, I'm hoping that you are going to benefit from some of the uh, information contained within this video. So a few housekeeping items. The first thing is, is I wanna let you know that your attorney is going to be looking at business structure from a very different standpoint than your CPA. An attorney is going to be looking predominantly at liability, whereas a CPA is going to be looking predominantly from taxes and cost. And that is exactly as it should be. So what's the important takeaway here is that those two people are talking and making sure that they maximize that for your business to the best of their ability. The other thing I want to mention is that I am a CPA in Virginia, so if you are watching this from out of state, know that your thresholds can change from one state to the other. For example, you know, my thresholds in Virginia are actually very much lower than my thresholds in California or New York in terms of business structure because the cost is much higher. And that does have an effect on the decision-making process in terms of what it costs to, to, to form it and what it costs to maintain it. So keep that in mind if you're outside of Virginia that this may be a little bit different for you, but I'm more than happy to have that discussion with you. The last thing I wanna mention is that I really want you to take away the idea that it is very, very important for you to understand, at least at a basic level, why things are happening for your business. I work with many people who come into my office and they have something like the S election in place and don't really know why. I'm looking at this going, this was not the right call. Why did you have an S election put in place? And more often than not, their answer is, because my accountant told me to. Well. That's not a good thing. You need to ask questions. So hopefully this video will give you the information that you need in order to ask the appropriate questions of your accountant. So there are several business structures that I'll be talking about. We've got sole proprietorships, sole props, LLCs, limited liability companies, S corporations, and C corporations. Now, the sole prop is pretty easy. It's got a low threshold in terms of cost to get started. You pretty much just need to go get a business license. There is no difference though in terms of either legally or tax, in, in terms of taxes, there's no difference between the owner and the company, all right? They're one in the same. So whatever happens to the company is happening to the owner and vice versa. So there's no difference. Even if you have a separate business name, ABC Company, your does business as name does not separate the taxes or the legal situation from the owner. It is, again, one in the same. Now, a sole proprietorship reports its income or losses on what's called a Schedule C, which profit and losses from business activities. If you make a profit, that profit is immediately taxed at 15.3, at a minimum, percent self-employment tax. Now, self-employment tax is the government's way of making those who are not on traditional payroll pay into the Social Security and Medicare system. That's why it's there. So essentially, a sole proprietor is paying for both the employee and the employer portion of those taxes, which is why it's set where it's set. Now, that money then, you know, that profit is then passed through to your 1040 and it is also subject to federal and state income tax, whatever tax bracket you happen to be in. So as a sole proprietor, it's very easy to put together, but there's no difference between the owner and the company and the taxes can get out of control very, very quickly if somebody isn't paying attention. Now, with the LLC, again, this is something that is very easy and inexpensive to form. Here in Virginia, if you go to the SCC site, the State Corporation Commission site, it costs about $100 to form an LLC unless you hire somebody to do it for you and then it can cost much more than that, but about $100 initially. It is also one of my favorite tax structures because it gives us some flexibility. First of all, let's start off with the fact that with an LLC, the owner and the business are actually mostly two separate things, okay? So the business has its own name, ABC Company LLC, and it even has its own identifying number that is not your social security number. It's called an EIN, Employer Identification Number. Another thing about the LLCs is that they can be taxed differently. 
They can be taxed as a sole proprietor, which I know sounds crazy, but sometimes is actually the right decision to make, or it can be taxed as a corporation, either an S corporation or a C corporation. I'm gonna talk more about the S corporation simply because that is the structure I see most often. We call it an S election. Now, as I explained, most profit and losses are taxed at 15.3% when you're a sole proprietor. When you're an LLC, they are taxed at the 15.3 if you choose to be taxed as a sole proprietor. That income and those income and losses are still reported on the Schedule C, or we can make something called the S election. Now the S election allows an LLC to be taxed as an S corporation without actually being one, which is great because it doesn't cost anything more to be an S election than whatever you pay somebody to fill out the form. I personally don't charge my clients to do a 2553 because that S election form takes five minutes to put together. So very easy. And what the S election does is eliminate self-employment tax. Now again, self-employment tax, Social Security and Medicare. So if we're going to, the government says if we're going to allow you this great tax benefit, you still need to pay into the Social Security and Medicare program. So now you are required to be on payroll of your own company, which is great in many cases if we're using this S election correctly, because as a sole proprietor, whether LLC being taxed as or a full on sole proprietor, you cannot really be on payroll. You can take draws from your company, but you can't be an expense of the company, which doesn't help reduce your net profit at the end of the year. However, if you're making enough money that the S election makes sense, not only are you still going to be paying into the Social Security and Medicare program, but you on payroll have just become an expense of the company, which does what to your income? It brings it down at the end of the year. And this can equate to thousands and thousands, even tens of thousands of dollars in tax savings if used appropriately. Now, there are some things that go along with this, and this is why it's not the smoking gun. And there are additional costs that go along with being an S election. You're going to have to have an additional return done. It's called an 1120S. And also know that any profit that the S corporation or S election makes is still taxable to the individual. It is a pass-through company, okay? It does not pay income taxes. It pays state tax, or it pays payroll taxes, it pays sales taxes, it does not pay federal or state income taxes. You also have to pay a payroll company to process your payroll. So that's an additional cost. Then there are the employer taxes. Employers have to pay into Social Security and Medicare. They have to match it for their employees. So there's an additional cost. So it's really important that you have somebody evaluating this and making sure that the tax savings outweigh the additional costs of being an S election. Here in Virginia, I start to look at that around the twenty-five to $30,000 net profit mark. In my opinion, that's about where the S election starts to break even and start paying for itself. Okay, now the next tax structure is an S corporation and the taxation on that is exactly as the S election is on the LLC, okay? It's your income, your federal income taxes are taxed at whatever tax bracket you happen to be in. That, that income passes through directly to you, is not subject to self-employment tax, but it is subject to federal in and state income taxes. The thing about the S corporation is that it creates even more separation between the owner and the company. It is still a pass-through company in that the individual is responsible for the income taxes, but in terms of liabilities, there's a much thicker corporate veil there. However, they are more expensive to form and maintain. So that's just something you're gonna wanna keep in mind when you form the S corporation. Also, the overhead needed is going to be greater initially for an S corporation because the owners have to be on payroll of that company. Equity starts to factor in, and that's a huge and complicated concept that I will put together in another video. It also, I need to point out, equity when you make the S election as an LLC also becomes a factor. That's something you don't have to worry about with sole proprietors, but it's definitely an additional concern when making these decisions. The last thing is the C corporation. Now it's a very different tax structure than the first three. You heard me say that those first three are pass-throughs, which means the individual is responsible for the income taxes. A C corporation is an, an, practically an entirely different person that can do almost everything except for vote, 
okay? So huge difference between the owners or shareholders, okay, from the corporation. The corporation is its own entity and it is responsible for its own income taxes. However, with the pass-throughs, the owners may take draws from those at no tax consequence to them, except that it's not an expense. You don't get to reduce your P&L by the amount of draws, okay? So that's the only tax issue there. With a C corporation, if you take a draw, it's actually considered a taxable dividend. So if a corporation makes $100,000, it's paying taxes, federal income taxes, on $100,000. And if the owner has taken $90,000 out, the owner is also paying dividend in, or dividend capital gains rates on taxes for those dividends. So the corporation has paid taxes on $100,000 and of that $90,000 goes to the owner and is taxed again. And that's the double taxation issue with the C corporation. I have a couple of those in my client list and most of the time it's not the right call for many people, but the clients I do have in place, it is the right call for them. But it's not something I generally recommend very often. Although it's an option for you to be discussing with your professionals. Okay, that wraps it up today for business structure. If you have any questions, please let me know. I was trying to keep this short and get in, didn't get into super detail, but I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions. And next week, I'm going to keep it a surprise. I'm going to see what we can talk about next week, and hopefully you'll tune in. Feel free to follow me on YouTube. Feel free to follow me on Facebook. I always look forward to hearing from all of you and all of your feedback. Take care.